he who is called Raish al Ghul. He's in there. I want him by any means necessary. Call me Poison Ivy. <laughs> Yo, what's going down, Green Screen Entertainment fans? Your boy Jay Green, back in effect right now with some more of my DCEU breakdown. Once again, in regards to what Zack Snyder has directed and produced specifically. Now, the time has finally come. It is March 18th, and I was up till like four in the morning this morning finishing the Snyder Cut on HBO Max. And I'm gonna tell you like this, that shit was fucking worth it. All right, fam, now remember, my plan is to give you a very simple, spoiler-free review. I'm only gonna be talking about lightweight differences from 2017 to the 2021 version, okay? Then, this weekend, I'm gonna link up with one of my homies and we're gonna go into a very spoiler-heavy discussion-type review to really go into the ins and outs of the plot and all of the details with that. With that said, let's get into this review. All right, fam, now let's jump into the villain and the villain's plot. In order to do that, I gotta go into the 2017 Justice League and then slide back in to the 2021 version. So, follow me on this. In 2017, we knew that Stephen Wolf was a conqueror of worlds. Wonder Woman had broken it down, saying that he came to Earth way back in the day. He had three mother boxes. These mother boxes are unlimited power and unlimited capabilities. He uses them to conquer worlds by changing the worlds into the atmosphere and the composition of his home planet and by turning all the remaining living beings on the planet into his own parademons. They're basically like zombie demon slaves, if you will. That's all we knew about him. Now, we learn in Snyder Cut that Darkseid, which is the DC Universe's biggest bad guy, was actually the person that came to Earth. He lost that battle, and in losing that battle, he also lost the mother boxes on Earth. They were hidden around the globe in different locations. Now, because Earth had had heroes that were able to defeat him, those mother boxes went silent. They went dormant, if you will. Superman came to Earth. Superman is like a god, and Darkseid and these mother boxes and all of these villains out there in the stratosphere, if you will, understand that Superman cannot be defeated. So, the mother boxes lay dormant. This movie opens up showing Doomsday and Superman's battle. Superman dies, and as he cries out in agony, that sound is like a beacon that goes around the world. And these mother boxes pick up that sound. And when they pick it up, they send out the signal to all these villains, to Darkseid and his crew, that the God is dead. Earth is now vulnerable to your attack. And that's basically where we jump in. Darkseid sends Stefan Wolf to go get the mother boxes so that he can put them together Create the unity so then Darkseid can come, conquer Earth, change its composition, change its atmosphere, and create all the remaining living beings into his slave zombies, these parademons, if you will. That's basically what he wants to do. We learn that the reason why Stefan Wolf is tasked with this job is because at some point in time that we haven't seen yet or heard of yet, Stefan Wolf actually betrayed Darkseid and is now in his debt and owes him like 50,000 worlds. And if you know anything about the DC universe, you know that there's like infinite Earths and all types of things like that. There's just different versions and multiple realities of Earth, if you will, throughout the universe. So 
Stephen Wolf is in his debt and he owes him like 50,000 of these things. But what I liked more about the Snyder Cut versus what Joss Whedon and company gave us in 2017 is basically every damn thing. If you remember in my previous review for the Justice League, I said that some of my biggest problems were the tonality, the lazy writing, the lack of character development for team members in the Justice League that we haven't even had movies for yet, right? And at the same time, that the, that the villain was one note and we don't really understand his true motivations to do what he's doing. In the Snyder Cut, we get that development for these characters that have yet to have a movie. In the Snyder Cut, we get the same tonality from Man of Steel, BVS, into Justice League. And even though I'm not saying that Stefan Wolf or Darkseid is showcased as like so multi-layered or anything like that, but we have a little bit more of an understanding of the, the power dynamic, if you will, between uh, Darkseid, Stefan Wolf, and the little mediator guy. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. I just watched this movie, okay? I'm running off for three hours of sleep. Give me an effing break. But we have an understanding of the power dynamic that goes between them. We understand why Stefan Wolf is doing what he's doing. Does he really even want to do this necessarily? Does he really want to be here? Like we get a little bit more of that. And at the same time, it alludes to things that are to come or at least would have been to come had he been able to finish the film the way he wanted to finish it and then we're going to still be rocking with Zack Snyder's vision moving forward. Also, another thing that I really enjoyed, believe it or not, was The Flash. I'm not saying that The Flash turned into like my favorite character in the film or that his the way that Ezra Miller played him is like completely redeemed or whatever, but I will say that a lot of those cheesy ass jokes that for me just did not work at all we're not in the film. I was nervous for that because I was like, please don't have him be that guy. The thing is, he's still that guy in regards to the levity. He's still that guy in regards to a little bit of comic relief. However, because his character is shown a little bit more in Central City, he has a little bit more conversations with his dad, things of this nature, you're built into him a little bit more. So when there are those moments of comic relief or levity, they fit much better. They make a lot more sense. And the little quips and jokes that he says just land more in this version than they did in the 2017 version. Like after watching the Snyder Cut and then thinking about the 2017 version, it really feels like the studio told Joss Whedon watching the movie back in 2017, look, let's just take this out and this out from The Flash and throw this joke in and that joke in and it don't even matter the scene that he's in or what's particularly going on or on his mind at the time. We just think we need that joke to make people laugh for whatever random reason. And that to me is not good filmmaking. Another thing that I really enjoyed was getting to understand a little bit more of the backstory for uh, Cyborg's character. Why is he so pissed at his dad? Look, was his dad in control of the car accident that he was in? Was his dad in control of the way that he would have actually saved his son's life? We see this in the 2017 version. No, his dad wasn't in control of that car accident. That's not his dad's fault technically. But there's reasons why he's so bitter towards his dad. We learn those reasons in this film. Once again, it gives you more understanding to the dynamic in their relationship so you're more invested. And that's how you make people care about your character. You have to have that development. Another thing that I enjoyed was the world that we are built into with this film. This movie is four hours long. I'm not gonna front. A lot of that time, maybe it could have been shaved off, but I'm not mad at that. If you've been on my channel long enough, you know that I am a fan of a movie that builds me into that world. And if that world is great, if that world is entertaining, if that world is beautiful, I can spend a lot more time in that world, especially if it means a little something to how I'm gonna feel with what a character has to accomplish, where they're going, what their motivations are, things of this nature. And in this beginning of the film gives us some Wonder Woman, Amazonian type shit. This movie gives us some Flash type shit. This movie shows us a little bit of Aquaman type shit. And this movie also shows us the journey that Bruce Wayne had to go on looking for these heroes to build this team. So I felt like we were literally on an adventure putting this team together. I didn't get any of that in the 2017 version. So I feel like the adventure of putting these heroes together is again, one thing that's different from Marvel. There was no adventure when Marvel was putting 
people together to create the Avengers. The Avengers were the Avengers. They had their own movies. They had their own missions. This is them. Nick Fury just showed up at the end of the movies and was like, yo, look, we're trying to put a team together. You good? And I'm not mad at that. It was fantastic. But this is different and it's okay to be different because now you have, like I said, two properties with different principles that we can both enjoy. We can enjoy both of them. But Joss Sweden took that away from us in 2017 by not showcasing the adventure that Bruce Wayne, one man, went on to find these metahumans and put them together. All right, fam, now we just about at the end of the video. Remember, I'm gonna be going into some more detail and some bigger plot themes and things like this with my homie this weekend, so look out for that video. But right now, I'm gonna leave you with this. Man of Steel, Superman, Henry Cavill, Killed it when we finally saw him in this movie, but just like in the original Justice League, it takes till like damn near the end of the film before we finally get some legitimate Superman action. When he got there, he was wrecking ship. He was doing what Superman was supposed to be doing. I just wanted so much more of Superman. He is great in this film when we get him, but I wanted more of him. The other thing is, caution to those of you parents out there that wanna watch this movie with your kids. It is on HBO Max. This movie is rated R, and it earns its R rating in regards to it's got some F-bombs in it. When they hit, they land very well to me, and it's got some blood in it. Wonder Woman's not playing around. She's smacking fools, Batman smacking fools, Superman smacking fools, Flash, everybody in the Justice League is kicking ass and taking names, and I loved every minute of it. This film is darker than what you are used to seeing in comic book film. But for all y'all fans out there of The Boys or Doom Patrol and things of this nature, Deadpool, then this is gonna be right up your alley, okay? It still is beyond me how much what we got in 2017 is different than Zack Snyder's true vision. This movie to me is far superior to the 2017 version. I like this movie a hell of a lot. I'm not gonna say I love it, but I hella, hella like this movie. And I already started watching it again a little bit before I started filming this review. So I know that this movie, much like Batman v Superman, the unrated version, is gonna to continue to grow on me. And I already like this movie, maybe even a little bit more than I liked Batman v Superman the first time I saw that one. So again, Check this movie out, HBO Max, it's rated R. Watch out if you got the kids trying to check it out, but it adds so much more to what you saw in 2017. I think you're gonna like it. I got another review slash discussion coming out later this weekend. I hope you enjoyed what I got for you right now and it entices you to go check this movie out so then when you watch that review slash discussion this weekend with me and one of my homies, you get a little bit more out of that as well. Your homie, Jay Green, I'm out.